you're like really little and you're at the pool for the first time. And your parents are in the water and they say, jump, we'll catch you. And you're on the side and you're like, that's crazy, I'm going to die if I jump in the pool. And finally they convince you and you jump and they catch you. And then you realize you're safe with this person in the water. And then what happens, you want to do it over and over and over again. So that's kind of how our faith is. The first big jump in our faith is obviously accepting Christ as our Savior. But after that, God requires these thousands upon millions of little leaps or bigger leaps of faith. And the question is, why do we have to do those leaps? Why is that so important in our faith after such a huge leap in the first place? So, before we can talk about stretching our faith, we have to see what faith actually is first. So the definition of faith is total and utter complete confidence in somebody or something. So when we say our faith is in Christ, we're saying basically, I trust God so much, I'm willing to give my life for Him. And that's a huge statement to say. And, but also, it makes sense, to make, makes sense within our faith because Hebrews... 11, 16. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists, and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. So, faith is something like a relationship, almost. Um, if, a if a good friend comes to you and says, Hey, we're best friends. I love you, and you know we're so close. But I don't trust you in every circumstance. Sometimes I don't think you care about me, you know? Wouldn't you say, whoa, we're not good friends then? You know, the same is with Christ in that situation. You know, for me a lot, when I, I struggle saying, you know, God, in this circumstance, you know, I just don't think you have my back. <coughs> and that's such a hard thing to battle with. But God keeps saying, no, I, I'll be with you. I love you and I trust. And you need to trust me. Um, over a hundred times in the Bible, God says, I will be with you. And in the Bible, when they repeat something, it means it's really important. So saying it over a hundred times in the Bible is extremely significant. So then the question comes about is, why do we need to stretch our faith, and how do we stretch our faith? Because what's the big deal? I mean, once we take the big leap of trusting God and giving our life for Him, why do we need to keep making these little leaps of faith? But then, um, but the question, but um, if you remember a long time ago, um, Adam did a lesson on comfortable Christians and the danger of becoming lukewarm in our faith. <coughs> and the reason why we want to do those leaps of faith is so that we don't become lukewarm in our faith. Um, Christ said that we need to pick up our cross daily for Him. And how important it is to keep being uncomfortable so that God can shine. And when we are less comfortable with ourselves and having to trust God more, then it gives God more opportunity to shine and have His power shine above us. Um, so, taking leaps of faith, you know, most people would say, well, stretching our faith, taking leaps of faith is when bad things happen. So God's going to have to do this horrible, awful thing to me so that I have to trust Him, like Job in the Bible. But that's not true. Um, actually, probably about 80% of our leaps of faith are in good times. It can be something as easy as you're playing a football game and you your team wins. And somebody comes up to you and says, you're awesome, and it's all about you, you know, you, 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 you're great. You know, you have a, you have a choice to make. Do you take the comfortable route saying, yeah, I'm all that, I'm so good at football, you know? Or do you give God credit where there needs to be credit? Because, you know, somebody could say, you know, why do I have to give God credit about a football game or doing good on tests? That was me who did it. But God also says that every breath we take is a gift. So when we look at that, in that perspective, everything we do is technically a gift of God. And with that mindset, we should say, wow, God has blessed me with so many talents, gifts, even when it's hard. I mean, good times and bad times are opportunities to stretch our faith. But, um, so, and a good example of uh, stretching our faith is kind of like running, of training for track, cross country. Let's just say you haven't ran in three years. Like, you have, you've never ran anything more than, you know, to your car. So then uh, you go out and say, I'm going to run two miles. 
Well, you can only run half a mile before you're dead and tired. Well, that's the first step. But what do you do? You keep training. You keep practicing. And soon that half mile becomes a mile. And a mile becomes two miles. And that's the same with our faith. When, we, when God keeps stretching us, He keeps giving us more confidence in God. Putting more ability to put more trust in God. And knowing that He has our back. Um, so a good example of that in my life was last year we went to New Orleans. Um, well, probably one of the most violent neighborhoods in New Orleans on a mission trip. And the pastor comes up to me and um, he says, I want you to share your testimony in front of 80 fully grown adult drug, drug addicts or people who struggle with addiction who's probably been in prison a lot of their lives and I want you to share your testimony and, see what, and talk about God. And this was absolutely terrifying. Um, I, um, in elementary to early middle school, I was probably the most antisocial kid in our, my grade. I was just quiet, did not want to talk to anybody. So this was a huge deal for me. So when I went up there, I'm like, this is not me talking, because I would be crying in a corner seeing all these scary dudes just looking at me for 15 minutes straight. <laughs> So, um, when it was done, the pastor comes up, comes up to me and says, wow, you did a great job. And I, the only thing I could say was, no, it wasn't me, it was God, because, again, I would be crying in a corner if it was me and my abilities. So, but after that, I could just see how much God <coughs> did in that moment, not to mention my life. And it's just so overwhelming once you take those leaps of faith and the stretching of faith, just how great and wonderful it is, seeing God work. So, um, I just want to hash really briefly on uh, bad things, because that's the same, it's the same essence, but um, just in, in the bad stuff, too, God really does stretch your faith. It's actually really difficult sometimes. With my migraines, for example, it's been three years fighting migraines, and still nothing really amazing has happened. And sometimes you're like, why, you know, you would have helped me by now. But, um, in my favorite verse, Romans 5, it talks about how we grow stronger in struggles when we trust God. We build more endurance and character, and it gives us hope, even how gloomy and dim it may look. And when it, think times get hard, I mean, God continuously says it over and over in the Bible. I love you, I care for you, and I will be with you. I mean, the last words Jesus said on earth was, I will be with you even to the ends of the ages. That should really mean something to us when times are getting really hard. So, um, just to wrap things up, basically, and stretch our faith, it is so necessary to stretch our faith daily. I mean, in every circumstance, God will open so many doors if you really look for those opportunities. Um, because if we're not stretching our faith, then our faith is... De-stretching. We're either getting better or we're getting worse in our faith. And usually when we're comfortable is when it's the most dangerous and we don't look at God as a help, but we look at ourselves more. And that's a really dangerous trap to get, in, to, to get into. So saying that, um, this is Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. So if you look up to your uh, little sheets here, on the back there are discussion questions. Um, one of them is talking about the significance of Ephesians 2. Um, so this is within your groups, small groups, you're going to be talking about this. But I just wanted to uh, point this one out because there's something, this is, all, this is literally the gospel in one verse. And it says, through, it has, for it has been grace you have been saved through faith. I want you to look specifically at that sec little section right there when you're talking within your groups. So then just go through those, and then when you're done, just close and pray within your own small groups. And that's all I have.